So, goodbye Aerie. How do I even begin explaining this manga? It was good, great even, but it was also very weird. But I guess that is what you would expect from a Tatsuki Fujimoto manga. I had a great time reading this one shot. It had everything I like in a story and it got me emotional towards the end of it. This was another really surprising story for me from Tatsuki Fujimoto, so let's get into all the reasons why I think that. Starting with the really interesting mystery that this manga has. Throughout the run of the manga, you ask yourself a lot of questions, like who is Eri? Or what is really happening behind the scenes of this movie we are seeing filmed? There is a lot of stuff this manga gets you to ask and surprisingly, they find a way to answer all of the questions. But only after you are left confused and wondering throughout the whole run of the manga. Then at the end, the mystery is revealed. Tatsuki Fujimoto is a master at subverting expectations and making you ask the interesting questions that most people wouldn't care about. And that is what made this manga so good. So this manga does sort of touch on dreams in a sense. Like it doesn't outright express anything or say specifically anything about dreams, but you can tell that the main character is very passionate about making movies and that it is something that he wants to do. And they do a really good job at expressing it. He gets really into filming and he likes to come up with interesting scenarios to throw people off and make them feel different things. Sometimes it works and other times it doesn't but he expresses himself throughout his films in a really interesting way that makes you realize that he really just loves making films and that is what he wants to do. People come and go all the time, but their memory will always be with us. Yuta, the main character, is essentially tasked with keeping the memory of both his mother and his friend alive. He films them and makes really interesting stories about their lives that resonate with people in different ways. One line in this manga that actually hits pretty hard is during a scene where his father talks about the abuse that Yuta's mother put him through. Even with what happened, Yuta still said he wanted to remember the good times he had with her and that is why the film turned out the way it did and why he ran away. Sometimes, even with bad people, you still want to keep their memory alive in whatever way possible. This manga tackles this in a really meaningful and heartfelt way that is very welcome to me. This manga also tackles loss in a very hard-hitting way. Yuta ends up going through loss multiple times in this story from losing his mother to losing his friend and even towards the end losing his family. He goes through a lot of loss and he struggles to cope with it. When it comes to his mother, he runs away because he doesn't want to deal with it. When it comes to his friend, he becomes obsessive about the film he made with her and tries to make it as perfect as possible over years and years. When it comes to his family, he just gives up and wants to end it all. We see him tackle loss in so many different ways throughout different portions of his life that all make him a whole person. He struggles a lot, but ultimately, it was to help him figure out his role in this world. So this manga has a brief few panels where it talks about the abuse Yuta went through as a kid when he was making the film of his mother. And although we don't get to see a lot of it, we do get to see how it affected him. He seems to struggle a lot with things like talking to people and opening up to them. He's fine in a sense of filming people, but it seems like he doesn't really know what to do outside of that. He just becomes so obsessed with the one thing he knows he can do well. He ends up being pretty lonely at certain points in his life before meeting Aerie as well, which does definitely affect him on a deeper level. He does eventually break free of his mother after she's gone and with the help of Aerie, but it took some time before he could. It is interesting to see that, despite how brief the moment is, it finds a way to affect the whole story in a really interesting way, which I quite like. One of my favorite things about this one shot was the relationship between Eri and Yuta. They felt like really good friends after a while and that made the whole story feel way better. But those interactions with each other formed a very nice and wholesome relationship between the two of them that transcended time for one of them. Their friendship was the one nice thing that came out of an otherwise pretty tragic manga. I mean, obviously this manga is pretty tragic. There's a lot of death and loss in it, so that makes sense. But they do a really good job of handling it. Fujimoto does a really good job in this story at hiding how characters think and feel. And that is not to this story's detriment. A lot of stories try to really get you into the character's head and try to make you understand as much as possible, but here, Fujimoto lets the story speak for itself. The tragedy in this manga has a lot to do with loss and how people cope with it. Yuta doesn't really cope with it well, but he does eventually get over it until the cycle repeats and repeats until he has lost everything. He does eventually find his reason for living, but that is after a lot of struggle and loss. The artwork in this manga, as per usual with Tatsuki Fujimoto, is amazing. I especially love the paneling during certain scenes. When Yuta and Eri are watching movies together, seeing all their different reactions to things makes it for a really nice read. It makes them really look like two friends just hanging out and having a good time. Fujimoto knows how to frame things in a way that can get you to either laugh or get you really emotional and he has an insane talent for drawing and storytelling. It's cool to see how far Fujimoto will push his art sometimes like he did here and with other series like Chainsaw Man. Goodbye Eri has some really solid character writing in it. We get to see a pretty good range of emotion from the characters and good character dynamics. Yuta is just your average teenager. One day, his mom tells him she wants him to film her life every day until she dies. And he does. But this is what flips his life upside down. He goes from your average teenager to the most hated person in his school because of the film he made. He goes through his depression and eventually, right when he is about to end it all, he meets Eri, this mysterious girl who said he liked his film. Eri and Yuta have a really nice friendship that comes together when they try to make a new film. 
Eri is very mysterious throughout most of the runtime of this manga. You never really know what it is that she is thinking, up until the end of the manga where your questions get answered. Eri always just keeps her real thoughts hidden, which makes her a really interesting character throughout the one shot. But besides those two characters, there are some other minor characters that help to formulate this story and make it pretty good. Yuta's dad just seemed like a caring father who was still grieving over the loss of his wife and regrets some of the things he didn't prevent in the past. He's supportive of his son and wants what is best for him, which is really nice. There are a couple of other characters who played the most minor of roles, and they're almost not even worth talking about, like Yuta's friend, who was in a couple of the interview sections in the story, but she doesn't really impact the story in any way. Although there aren't that many characters, the ones that we do see a lot of are really interesting and provide a really good view of how people deal with loss and how to remember loved ones. Goodbye Eri was another really good one-shot manga from Tatsuki Fujimoto. Although this manga didn't hit me as hard as Look Back did personally, I can still see the appeal and I still found great enjoyment from this manga. Goodbye Eri was a very grounded story with some mystical elements thrown in to make for a really hard-hitting story. It hit all the marks it needed to and that is why it turned out so good. If you made it this far into the video, maybe think about dropping a like, it helps out a ton. And maybe think about subscribing as well. I make new videos every single week on a variety of different anime and manga related stuff so you'll never be starved for content. I hope to see you in the community and if you do join, I'll see you next week with a new video. Bye!